Welcome to Live Doc, your online Doc Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem, welcome back to today's daf, which is Ervin Daf Kuf Aleph. On the top of the Amr, let's begin from the Mishnah. Hadelez Sheba Mukta. We have a door, an improperly constructed, a, ma- a makeshift door, which is used to close up the doorway of the Mukta. This was a storage area behind the homes. Or V'chadakim Sheba Pirza, the bundle of thorns used to shore up a breach in the wall. Or Machzalais, or mats. Ein Noyon Behen. They cannot be used to close up the doorway on Shabbos, Elam came Gvayim Minarts, unless they're a bit suspended, they're off the ground a bit. Why is that? Let's see Rashi inside. Rashi here on the top line of the Amud, Masnisan Hadalashu Mukta. So Mukta is a Rukhava Shachari Habatam, this area behind the homes, a storage area, Umshum Hachi Nakatla. That's why the Mishnah describes the doorway here as being as servicing the Mukta in specific why. It's not a commonly used area. And since it's not a commonly, it's not an area which is frequented, the Baal Bayes doesn't go ahead and construct a proper door for it. A properly hanging door. And a set door, a permanent door. Rather, he just takes this uh, material, this... Uh, board or whatever, and he puts it against the doorway. And when he opens the door, he just places it down on the floor. Sometimes they have these doors which are actually connected and hanging off the doorway, but they're just dragging on the floor. They're not properly constructed doors. Says the Mishnah, they cannot be used on Shabbos or Yontif. Why? Because he's building, he's constructing. He's taking a board which is detached, placing it inside this breach, inside this doorway. He's adding to the structure of this wall. Oh yeah, filokshit, luya, vinigres. Or even says Rash in the case where it's actually hanging from the doorway, so it's attached, it appears like a, like a door. Vinigres, but it's dragging on the ground. Eiza kavua, it's not something permanent, it doesn't appear like a properly constructed doorway. Ukshima So when he picks it up, to place it into the doorway, even the inakvur sham, since it's not something which is permanent, it's not designed as a properly constructed door. Mechzikibayin, it appears like he's building, which is a malach on Shabbos or Yont. So the first case was hadelas shuv muktzah, this door used for the muktzah v'chadakim shuv pirtza, that's the bundle of thorns, koitzim thorns shasam chavilois. So he bundled these thorns with skinom listayim behem pirtza. He designated them for use. To be soisim, to be soisim, the pirza to close up the breach in the in the structure. Sometimes he pulls it out to uh, to allow getting through. So it's a uh, it's a makeshift door. Umachzeles shal kanem glida this mat. So three examples of improperly constructed doors, and the mission tells us you cannot use them unless they're not only tied to the doorway, but they're lifted. They're suspended off the ground, in which case they give the appearance of a proper door. Otherwise, it looks like you're just pushing something into that hole. You're closing up the hole and you're constructing. You're doing binyan on Shabbos. Says the Gemara, Viraminu. We have a kash of Is that the case? Do we really require that should be lifted off the ground to allow its use. Delas You have a door which is dragging. You have a mat which is dragging. The kankan hanigrar. Kankan is a, a part of this, the handle of the plow. As she says, they sometimes would use that as well to close up a doorway. So if it's nigrar, it's dragging on the floor. Bizman shekshurin vitluin. Noilimban. Bishabas. When they're tied and suspended from the doorway, you can use them. On Shabbos, and certainly on Yom Tov. So apparently, it doesn't need to be lifted off the ground to allow it use. Amra Abaye Bishyesh Lehem Tzir. We're speaking, well, they have a a hinge affixed to them, in which case it indicates very strongly that it's a proper door and does not give the appearance of Boyne. Rava Amar Bishahayulhem Tzir. Even though presently they don't feature a a hinge, but since they previously had a hinge, that's enough to provide indication that this is a door 
and it does not look like binyan. Meisri we have a kash from Abraisa, which says like this, Deles hanegreres, the door which is dragging, Machzelos hanegreres, a mat which is dragging, the kankan hanegreres, this kankan which drags, Bizman shikshurin utlin, ugvoyim in arts, when they're tied, suspended from the doorway, and they're lifted a bit off the ground, I feel when they, even if they're just a bit off the ground, a hair's breadth. No alam you can use them. Vim lab, otherwise, a no alam you cannot use them. Apparently, you need to be tied and suspended off the ground. And how does this fit with Abayim Rabu, who just told us that as long as there's a hinge affixed to it, that's sufficient. Says the Gemara, Abayim Metalis Rutamei, Verava Metalis Rutamei. Abayim Rabu will both interpret this price based on their opinions. Abayim Metalis Rutamei, Abayim will interpret according to his opinion. That although the brisa indicates that it needs to be suspended off the ground, but we actually have two options. Either or is sufficient. Either it has a tzir, this hinge, which gives the impression that it's a proper door, or an absence of a hinge it needs to be lifted off the ground. That's Abai's approach. Rava will interpret according to his shita. The brisa means, either, either it once had a hinge, so, that's enough. Since it previously had a hinge, that, that indicates that this is a door. Or, it's lifted off the ground. So, in summary, regarding these improperly constructed doors, these makeshift doors, when they're tied and suspended from the doorway, you need one of two. Either it be suspended off the ground, in which case it gives the appearance of a proper door. It's meant to be open and closed. You're not constructing anything, you're not adding construction, construction material to the structure here. And in absence of the Gvoyim and Aretz, even if it's dragging on the ground, if it has a hinge, currently has, according to Abayi, or previously had, according to Rava, that allows it to use on Shabbos, or Yat Tana Rabbonon, Soichei Koitzen. They have these stalks, these thorn stalks for Chavilan, or these bundles of thorns, Sheskinin La Pirza, Shabachatzer which you designate to be used to shore up the breach in the Chatzah. Bizman shekshur and v'tluin, when they're tied and suspended from the structure, no alam ben b'shabas, they can be used on Shabbos. Ve'en tzor chalem ben and certainly on yantav. And of course we're speaking where they're suspended a bit off the ground. Tanu yab chiyah, or chiyah tora sabrais, del asal mana. We have a widowed door. We're going to see soon what that means. So del asal mana hanigreris, this improperly constructed door, which is dragging on the floor. You cannot use it on Shabbos. What exactly is this Del Salmana? Some say Dechat Shifa. It only has one board. So it's not a compilation of various boards stuck together. It's a single board, in which case Rashi explains it certainly gives the appearance like it's just serving to close up the wall and it's construction material. It doesn't look like a door. Some say Although it has several boards, but they're not properly affixed with each other, they're just nailed together. They don't have the gishma, the proper wooden pegs, which are generally used to attach the boards together and create that door. Now, Tosis in Divar Maskel Delos Almana points out that in the case of Delos Almana, the Chilish is even if it has a tzir, that hinge that we discussed earlier, that cannot take the place. Of the um, of the requirement to have it suspended off the ground, so Tosis learns that Del Salmon is actually inferior to the doors we mentioned earlier. In this case, even a hinge would not suffice. Continues the Gemara. Continue with a discussion of binyan. So we know we're not meant to form a oil on Shabbos, even oil harai, temporary oil. So Ravida will tell us that there are some some procedures that we're meant to refrain from doing on Shabbos or Yontif. Actually, we're meant to do it in the reverse order than it's done generally during the week in order not to give the impression that you're doing binyan and creating a, a, a tent, a, a roof. Amar of Yudah, hai medurta. When a person is going to form a, to uh, arrange logs for a large fire, memamal of matashari. If he does it from top down, that's okay. So he takes the upper log, suspends it in the air, and then, Puts the logs beneath it to support it. That's okay. But if he begins on the bottom and works his way up, in which case he's constructing 
The Mechit says the oil, that's Aser, because you may not construct an oil aray on Shabbos. So you can only do it if you do it in the reverse order of the way it's typically done, which mitigates the concern of oil. Mechem be Aser, the same thing regarding piling up eggs. So you're piling them up for roasting, etc. So you meant to hold the upper egg midair and then place the lower ones beneath it, but not build it up from bottom up. Mechem Kidra, same thing regarding a pot. So you take two barrels side by side, put a fire in the middle, and put the pot on top of it. So rather than doing that matter, where you're creating some sort of oil, hold the pot up and then place the barrels beneath it. Mechem Purya, likewise a portable bed, which had a structure, as she explains, and a leather sort of mattress on top, which would be hooked on the uh, on the frame. So rather than put the frame down and then this um, leather sheet or mattress on top, do it in the reverse, put up the mattress midair, and then slip the frame beneath it. Likewise, when arranging barrels, so you would have two side by side, and one hovering partially on this one, partially on that one, in which case you're creating a, a roofed area beneath it. So do it in the reverse, the way, the way, then the way it's normally done, put the upper one, and then the lower ones beneath it. And the point is to avoid the impression of an act of binyan. This Stuki turned to Rishub and Hanani and told him, Chadka, you, uh, you thorn, thorn bush, you, you compare to a thorn. Why? Because the Pasuk in Micha describes you as follows. The best ones amongst Klai are like a thorn. So Rabbi Shul responded to him, Shat, you foolish one. Shafel is safe at the crow. Why don't you go proceed? Go down to the next part of the Pasuk, where we find that the Pasuk is actually praising Kal Yisrael. It seems to be using these words in a praiseworthy context. The Chsiv Yasham Musoicha. A straight, like a, like a straight fence. Elamai Tuvam Kechedek. So what does the, mish, the Pasuk mean when it says Tuvam Kechedek, comparing them to a thorn bush? It's actually a lashon of Shvach, a praiseworthy context. Kishem Kishem Shechadokim Alalu. So the Pasuk is describing the good ones, the Tzadik and the Chacham amongst Chal Yisrael, and comparing them to thorns. Why? Just as the Chadokim Halal, these thorns, which are placed inside the holes in the, in the, in the wall, in the structure, Megin and Ala they protect, they cover up the breach, and secure the perimeter of the enclosure. Kach Tevim likewise the good ones, the Tzadikim amongst us, Maginim Aleinu, they protect Chal Yisrael. They protect us from misfortune. They safeguard the, the spiritual integrity of Klai So it's actually a shvach and not something in the negative. Dabar Acher, another pshat, toivam kechedek, that the tzaddik among Klai Yisrael are, are like a chedek. So chedek, the ches, can be expressed as a hey. Hey and ches, Masha explains, come from the same a source in the uh, same part of the of the throat, so sometimes they're changed. So the chedek here is meant to be learned as hedek. Tavim ke hedek shemahat kenes rishayim. Look at Hanim. The tzaddikim will crush the rishayim, the goyim, when it comes to Gehenim, to Gehenim. And the mashal explains that the gemara here is referring to the fact that its tzaddik will actually take overtake the chedek of the rasha. The chel, the, the gan eden portion of the rasha will actually be transferred to the tzaddik. So the tzaddikim will crush the rishayim to Gehenim, Shnemar, Kumi Vadoishi Basiyain, get up, uh, Kal Yisrael, and crush, Kikarnich Asim Barzel, I'm going to form your horns, uh, I'm going to make them metal horns, or if I say Sayach Asim Nechusha, and your hooves, I will um, design as um, copper hooves, Vadikois Amim Rabim Vagaymer, and you'll crush, the other nations. So the point here is that the Pasuk of Tavim V'chedek was actually praising Kal Yisrael. They're good. The Tzadikim actually protect Kal Yisrael. And Yashir Mesucha, Rashi says, they're Meginim Aleinu Kesucha. appears like he means like the fence around the enclosure. Some say Kesucha, like a uh, like, like shelter, like a hut, which protects. So Kal Yisrael has the Tzadikim, the Chacham, to protect them. So this was a response to the Tzaduki, 
and, and he corrected his, his uh, impression, setting him straight that it's not a Lashon of Gnai, actually a Lashon of Shrach. So in conclusion, regarding these temporary, these makeshift, improperly constructed doors used for these areas, the Muktza, etc. So it needs to be tied and suspended, and either suspended off the ground, or a, um, a hinge currently has, has a hinge, or, according to Rav, as long as it formally had a hinge, that's enough. So it needs to be kosher, tied, with tully, hanging, and either gvayim in the as the mission says, or as Abai added, seer would suffice as well, according to Rav, if it previously had a hinge, that too indicates that it's, a, it's meant to be used as a door to swing in and out, and does not give the impression of binin. And we learned that the del Salman is actually an inferior type of door. Taisus explains that in that case, we need that it, go, it be suspended off the ground. Just having the tzir would not suffice. Continues the mission. A person may not stand in Rishas HaYachid and lean over to Rishas HaRam and open a door in the other Rishas. So he takes a key that's lying there and unlocks the door. He can't do that. Why? This is Ramei Shita. We learned this earlier. He's, he's concerned that he, he might inadvertently bring that Chafetz to the location where he's standing. In which case he's transferring from one Rishas to the other. Or Rishas HaRabim V'yiftach Rishas HaYachid he shouldn't stand in Rishas Rabim and handle something, open a door in Rishas HaYachad. Elim ken osa mechitza gavaya sara tfachim, unless he constructs a mechitza ten tfachim high, in which case he's inside the mechitza and the lock is in Rishas HaYachad as well. So everything is in the same Rishas. In this case, there's no concern. Divir Abmer, who's concerned about cross-domain handling. The Chalm disagree. They say a person can stand on one Rishas, lean over the other Rishas without any concern. In fact, who we'll prove it with a story? Amr Lai the Chum responded, "Masa b'shuk shalos patamim shay b'shulaim." In fact, there was a story which occurred in the butcher's market in Yerushalayim. Shayu noylin umanich nasam avteach. They would stand in the market and they would lean over to the storefronts and lock them. They would be noyel. They would close the locks of the storefront, which was the Yishu Sayyachid, and they would then place the key on a little window sitting above the Pesach of the Yishu Sayyachid. Rabbi Yishu Yomer, Shuk Shul Samarim Hoya, was actually a wool market. But in any case, we see from here, there's no concern of an inadvertent transfer. You can stand in, in the street, in the Shuk, in the marketplace, lean over to the to the uh, Rishu Sayyachid, and lock, put the key there, without any concern of transferring the key to Rishos HaRabim. Now we're going to le- learn now Gemara several examples of locking doors from one Rishos to the other, and there was something called a mano, so it's different than our, from our keyholes, which are just holes in the door. This mano was some sort of lockbox, which can be very large in size. It can be 10 tefachim high, 4 tefachim wide, which was affixed to the door, and that was used to lock and unlock the door. They would slip the key into that lockbox, and open and shut the lock. So apparently, again, we're speaking where he's standing in the market and leaning over to a lockbox, which is, which is a Rishas Hayachid. And that's why the Chachamim brought a riot from there to indicate you can. We see that it, it's allowed. You can go stand in one Rishas and lean over to the other Rishas without any concern of an inadvertent transfer back to your old Rishas. Says the Gemara, how do we understand the words of the Rabbanon? They responded to him with a raya from a a marketplace where? In Yerushalayim. Now, Rabbi Meir discussed cross-domain transferring, cross-domain use, regarding what type of Rishuyas. Mishnah began, you can't stand in Rishus HaRabim, Rishus HaYachid, and lean over to Rishus HaRabim, or Rishus HaRabim, and lean over, or handle something Rishus HaYachid. These are Rishuyas the Rishus where if he ends up transferring something, he has committed an Issa the Rishus. So Rabbi Meir is speaking about Rishus HaYachid and Rishus and the Chachamim who disagree with him and brought a raya from the Shuk in Yushalayim were speaking about what? A Karmelis, because Yushalayim is not a Shisarab. So how can you bring a raya from there to negate Rameh Yashita? Perhaps Rameh would agree if it only involves a Karmelis, in which case, at worst case, what is he going to do? Is it the Rabbanon? Perhaps over there Rameh would agree. Cross-domain use is okay. So how can the Chachamim bring a raya from Yushalayim, which is a Karmelis, 
to this prover Meis Halacha, which was speaking strictly about Ushis Hayacha, the Mishas Aram, where it can lead to Isa Darais. So the Mordechai Rabbanon, Amar Rab Meir Ushis Arabim. Rab Meir spoke about Ushis Aram, which can evolve into Isa Darais. Um Mahadru Inu Karmelis, and they responded with bringing a raya from Yushalayim, which is a Karmelis. How can you prove one from the other? How do we know it was a Karmelis? The Amar Rabba, Barbar Chana, Amar Biyechanan. Yushalayim. It's not for the fact that the doors of Yishalayim would be regularly closed during night time, which made it into a properly enclosed area. If not for that, what would be chayiv in Yishalayim, if he transfers, he would be chayiv on account of Yishalayim, because as I say, it was a publicly used area, lots of people, but the fact that they actually closed those doors mitigated that status, took away the Yishalayim status, made it into a fully enclosed area, it is no longer a Rishis Rabbim. What is it? Rashi explains it's actually like a Chatzah You have lots of people living in the courtyard, so an Erev is required. It's a rabbinic requirement. It's like a Karmelis. But Menat Torah, it's not a Rishis Rabbim. It's a full-fledged Rishis So how can the Chambing arrive from there? Perhaps Rabbi would agree that you can stand in the marketplace in Yerushalayim, which was not a Rishis Rabbim, and lean over and handle something in Rishis because at worst case, it will never lead to Issa Deres. Amra Papa, Khan Koidem Shenifer Tzuba Pratzis. It depends at what point in history we're speaking. Rabbi Yechonon's statement that Yushalayim was in a non Rishis Ram entity was speaking Koidem Shenifer Tzuba Pratzis before the Yivanim came and breached the large breaches, the gaps in the walls, which made it into an unenclosed area into Rishis Ram. So before that, it was probably enclosed, and indeed it was a Carmelis. The Mishnah, however, with the Rabbana proved their point from the Yushalayim story, was Khan La'acha Shenifer Tzuba Pratzis. It's related to the point in time in history where the breaches have already occurred. And the Shuk in Yerushalayim was a full-fledged Rishis Arabim. Now the Chacham have a solid right. Look, you or mayor don't allow standing in Rishis Arabim and handling something in Yerushalayim. How did they do it in Yerushalayim, which was a Rishis Arabim? Rav Amar, Seifa Asan Shari Gina. Rav says like this, the Mishnah is actually missing a clause. Indeed, the Mishnah initiates by speaking about Rishu Yisdevais, Shesarab, Shesayachad, and in the reverse. However, there's something missing in the Mishnah. Rebbe actually prohibited cross-domain transferring, cross-domain handling of Chayfetz, even when it comes to Rishu Yisdevais, but like a Karmelis. Seifa, the, the uh, conclusion of the Mishnah, where the Chachamah proved their point from the Shuk of Yishalayim, which was a Karmelis, Asan the Sharagina is in reference to the gateways of the gardens, which was a, a Carmelis. Where there as well, Rabbi does not allow handling. He does not allow you to stand in the Gina, which is a Carmelis. Why is a garden a Carmelis? Although it's enclosed, but it's a large non residential enclosure, greater than two. So, has been like a Carmelis. There as well, Rabbi does not allow standing in the Carmelis, in the Gina, and handle a key in the Shusayachet. So, even when it pertains to merely Isurim the Rabbana, Rishis the Rabbana, Rab Meir applies the same restriction. And that's what the Chacham will come in to respond to. Vachik Amar. And this is what the Mishnah means to say. So the Mishnah begins by saying, you can't stand in Shusayachad and handle in Shusayachad, or vice versa. Vachin and likewise, Layamad in Shusayachad, Vyftach Vikarmas. One may not stand in Shusayachad and open a lock in the Karmas. Vikarmas, Vyftach Vishusayachad, nor can he stand in the Karmas like this garden and open up the lockbox, which is the Shusayachad. So in this case where he's standing in the garden and he'd like to handle something in the Shusayachad, he can't do so unless he constructed a Mechitza Tent Vacham Hai, which puts him together with the Shusayachid, in which case he and the key on the same Rishus, the Rameyer. So very clearly Rameyer applies his halach. He has the same concern when it comes to Rishus, the Rabbana like a Karmelis. And on that, the Rabbana responded by being a Raya, from Yerushalayim, which was a Karmelis. Amr Lois, they told him, Masa B'Shuk, Shabbat Tom. Shai B'Shalayim, in fact, it was a story. It was a practice, which was commonly practiced in the marketplace of the Patamim, of the butchers of Yerushalayim, which indeed was a Karmelis. So what do they do? Shai Yunoylin, Omanich, and Asafteach. They would lean over to the uh, door, lock the, uh, lock the lock, and then they would place the key on the window, which was above the Pesach. And we see from there that you can go ahead 
and um, a handle, something from the Karmus, to Rishi Sayachid, because the Iman of the Lachbox was Rishi Sayachid. So you see, it's no concern. Rishi Yayim and Shukshot Samar Mahaya was actually a wool market. So in conclusion, the mission tells us that according to a mayor, there's a concern about cross-border handling, because inadvertently he might bring it back to the Rishus where he's standing, and do a Malacha. We have two approaches to the Mishnah. We have our Papa's approach, where indeed the Ramey is strictly speaking about Rishis Doi Raisin, Rishis Hayochet, Rishis Rabbim, to which the Rabbana responded, we don't have that concern of inadvertent transfer, we'll prove it from Yerushalayim, where they used to stand in the marketplace and close, lock the doors in the Rishis Hayochet. And according to our Papa, the Yerushalayim at that point in history was a Rishis Hayochet, because it was after the Ivanim came and breached the gaps in the wall. So this forms, this provides a riot, a proof to Rabban and Shita that indeed you may stand in Shusha Rabbim and handle something in Rabbim's approach was that Ramea, not only this allows cross-border handling when it comes to Shusha de Raisa, like Shusha and Shusha Rabbim, but he, this allows that when it comes to Kamas as well. And pertaining to that halacha, the Rabbana responded with the riot from Yishalayim, which indeed was a Carmelist, because we're speaking that the uh, walls and the doors were enclosing the area properly. And the Rabbanon bring a right from there, that we see that, at least when it comes to Rishis, the Rabbanon, there's no concern. You may go ahead and stand on one Rishis and handle something in the other Rishis. Continues the Gemara, Tan Rabbanon. We have a Bryce as follows. Continuing on the same topic, same discussion, between Ramei and the Rabbanon. Pischei Shari Gina. The openings of the Shari Gina, the gateways to the garden. The garden was a was a um, Carmelist, as we discussed earlier, because it was a large, non-residential enclosure. So how do you proceed with regards to locking these doors? So the gateway to the Gina was situated between the Gina, which was a Carmelist, and the Yishasarabim outside the Gina. So it was right in the middle of the Carmelist and Yishasarabim. It says the Bryce of Bizman Sheishlam Beishar Mibifnim. When these gateways feature a shpesha, which is a small hut, a gatehouse, which is a mechitza formed right next to the, the gate. So when there's one on the inside of the gate, meaning inside the gina, that allows him to open and lock that door from inside the gate. He stands inside the gatehouse, which is a rishasayach, and handles the door, which is a rishasayach as well. If you have the beisha, this gatehouse, outside the gateway to the garden. So you've created a small sayachet on the exterior of this gateway, that allows him to open and lock the door from the outside, because, once again, he's going to be standing inside the confines of the Beishar, which is a sayachet, and that allows him to handle the lockbox, which as well is a rishos hayachet. Rashi explains, we're speaking about a manol, this lockbox, which has a din of rishos hayachet, ten tfachamai, four tfachamai, so, as long as you create an enclosure around yourself and the lockbox, you're okay. Mekan and Mekan, if there's a gatehouse on either side of the gate, that's a la- that allows them free access on both sides. Peseach v'noil, kan v'kan, you can open a lock on both sides. Ein lehen, like lekan v'le lekan, if there were, there's no gatehouse on either side. Asur and kan v'kan. In that case, you cannot go ahead and lock that door on either side, because if you're on the inside and you're standing in the garden, which is a carmel, you cannot go ahead and lean over and handle something in the lockbox, which is a Rishis Sayachet. Nor can you stand outside the gate, the, the gate which is a Rishis Rabbim, and lean over to the lockbox, which is a Rishis Sayachet. So, it appears, at this point, that, this is Shidus Rameer, that cross-domain handling is not allowed. In both instances, whether we're speaking about Rishis De Raisa, like Rishis Rab and Rishis Yachad, or even Rishis Rab Bama, like when he's standing in a Carmelis. And he'd like to lean over to the lockbox, which is Rishis Yachad. And the Gemara will actually tell us that Rameir reverted. He backtracked from this halacha, changed his mind, and the restriction does not apply to a Carmelis. Okay, we'll see that soon. So, so far we spoke about a Sharigina, the gateways to the gardens. Continues the price of Likewise, if we have storefronts open to Rishis Rab, Rashi explains that, in contrast to the 
Shari Gina, whose lockbox was of standard design, it was 10 Tvachim high, 4 Tvachim wide, which made it Irish Sayyachid. Sometimes the storefronts had lockboxes of various shapes and designs. Sometimes they were 10 Tvachim high, in which case they were Sayyachid. Sometimes they weren't. They were below 10 Tvachim, in which case they were Carmelis. That's why the Brisa proceeds to describe the, the next halacha in connection to a storefront because the Brisa wants to cover all bases. Speaking about all types of lockboxes which were indeed featured in these storefronts. Likewise, if we have these storefronts, which are open to Shisarab, and, as Rashi explains, they featured a threshold, a scooper, in front of the storefront, which was actually less than 10 ten, ten, ten to in height, so it was a Carmelis. He's going to stand on the Carmelis and attempt to close, to lock his store. So you do it in this manner. That, now it depends what type of lockbox is present there. If the manol is less than 10 tfachim in height, so what then does it have? Then it have a So now he's free to use it. He's free to stand in the escupa, the threshold, in front of the store, which as well as a karmelis, and handle anything and actually could even transfer something into the lockbox which as well is a karmas because they're both the same type of rishos the scoop in front of the store and the lockbox on the door of the store are both karmas so what happens there says the b'risa maybe mafteach mer shabbos he can simply bring his key from before shabbos or manicha be scuba places it on the threshold which is a karmas lamachar tomorrow on shabbos pesech v'noyel boy he can open and lock with that key and then brings it back to the threshold. Since the scupa and the manol here are both categorized as a karmus, so free transfer is allowed. He can simply place his key on the, somewhere on the scupa before Shabbos. Tomorrow he can come along, take that very key, pick it up from the scupa, put it into a lockbox, which is below ten tfach, which is a karmus as well, do what he has to do, and put the key back in the scupa. So this is a very straightforward, simple Allah. Karmus to karmus, no problem. Continues the price. But let's say the lockbox on the door of the storefront is higher than ten tefachim, which makes it a rishis hayachet. So now he can no longer transfer from the escupa, from the threshold, which is a karmus, over to the lockbox, which is a rishis hayachet. So how is he meant to proceed? Says the Brisa. This again is Rameir speaking. Maybe Maftech Meir Shabbos, he brings his key from before Shabbos, and places it somewhere in the lockbox itself. So the key right now is in a Rosh Hashayach. Tomorrow, Lamachar, he comes along, he position, positions himself on the Iskupa, which is a Karmelis. And although he can't transfer from the lockbox to the Karmelis and vice versa, but he can lean over and handle the key which is sitting in the lockbox, which is a Rosh Hashayach. Peseach, Venoyel, he can open a lock, and then he returns the key back to its place, meaning to the manal, puts it on the manal, wherever he would like to hide the key. Divir So this is Rameh Shita. Now, stop for a moment. We seem to have a contradiction. Because earlier Rameh told us that cross-border handling is not allowed, even when it comes to Rishir's the Rabbana. Right? The beginning of the Brisa described the garden, which was a Karmelis, in which case you're not allowed to stand there and handle the key. And here Rameer himself just finished telling us you can stand on the Karmelis Yiskupa and handle your key in the lockbox, which is Rishi Sayyachat. The Gemara later will tell us indeed Rameer backtracked from Meshita and he applied no limitations, no more restrictions when it comes to a Karmelis which is merely Rishi Rabbana, which at worst case can only result in Issa Rabbana. So he reverted from that restriction. Okay, we'll get to, that, get to that soon. But let's just summarize what we're holding at this point. The Bryce began with a garden and proceeded with the storefront. In the case of the garden, the Brisa tells us that you cannot stand in the, which is rub outside the garden, or in the garden itself, which is a karmas, and handle the key sitting in the lockbox, which is a Then the Brisa proceeded with the storefront. It depends what the situation is. If the lockbox is merely a karmas because it's below ten tefachim, so then you have free reign. You can stand in the escupa, which is a karmas, and transfer back and forth without any concern. However, if the manual is above 10, in which case 
it is deemed a Rishasayachet. In this case, you're limited. Although you could stand on the escupa of the Carmelis and handle something in the lockbox. But you can't go ahead and transfer back and forth because you're in a Carmelis. And the lockbox is a Rishasayachet. So this is Ramei Yashid. Chacham are going to challenge him on this one. Chacham are even when the manol is above 10. Which would appear that it's a Rish Sayachat. The Kumar will explain exactly what the design of this manol is. But even when the manol is above 10, said the Chachamim, maybe Mavteach Mevr Shabbos, he can bring his key from before Shabbos. So in advance, he can place his key on the Eskupa, which is a Karmas. Lamachar, tomorrow on Shabbos itself. You can take that key which was deposited on the escuba, which is the cameras, pick it up, use it to open and lock the mano which is above ten tfachim. So in contrast, with Rameir, who didn't allow him to do that, Rameir said, if the mano is ten tfachim, you cannot go ahead and take the key from the escuba and make use of it in the mano. Chacham disagreed. They say you can. So even if the mano is above ten, you can simply place your key in advance on the escuba. Come along on Shabbos, take that key from the Eskupa and open and lock the lockbox. And then you can go ahead and put it back in the uh, in its location, back to the Eskupa. Or you can simply place the key on a little window sitting above the Pesach. If it's small in size. And it's a, a Malcolm Tur. But if that window is large in size, it has a surface area of 4 by 4 then you may not take this key, which originated in the Carmelist, the Eskupa, which was used to open and lock that door. You cannot take it and proceed with it to the window above the door, above the manual, which is 4 by 4 tfachim. Why? What's wrong with that? If the, um, if the key was allowed to be taken from the escupa and to be used in the in the manual. Why can't you just take that key and put it on a uh, on a window which is for what fachim? Because it's as though he's transferring from one shus to the other. Where did this key originate from? It was it wasn't the karma, it's the escupa. What's the um, final destination? It's that window which is four by four tfachim, which is Rishayachat. So although it went through the manal. It made a stop in the manal on the way. You cannot go ahead and bring it over to the Rosh which will complete a transfer because it originated in the Karmas. And now it's going to end up in Rosh Hashayachid. You can't do that. As more soon explain the background of this halach. In the meantime, let's analyze the Machlekes here. Well, what's the point of the dispute between Ramein and Chacham? Right, let's go back a second. Rameh told us, you may stand on the escupa, which is a kamlis. Lean over to the entranceway, to the doorway of the chanus, and take the key from the rishasayachet there, open and close, and leave it there. You cannot go ahead and take that key and transfer it back and forth from the escupa, which is a kamlis, to the lockbox, which is ten tfachim high. Whereas the Chacham said, you can! Even if the man was ten tfachim high, you can go ahead, take a key from the escupa, pick it up, Bring it over to the mano. Let's analyze. What, what is the nature, the exact nature of this mano? What is it? Let's go back to the Brisa, which began by describing the gate to the garden, and then proceeded with Vechein Chanuyas, likewise a storefront. The fact that the Brisa seems to connect the two. Vechein Chanuyas, likewise, when it comes to storefront, storefronts, apparently, just as the garden was involving a, a karmelis, because the gina was a karmelis, so too the storefronts entail and involve a karmelis, meaning that in front of the storefront is an escuba, a threshold which is less than ten tfachim in height, which has a din of a karmelis. So the chanuyis picture involves a karmelis as well. Mechlal de beskubas karmelis askina. Okay, so we know that for a fact. We have a storefront facing Shisram. But in front of the storefront, we have a, a scuba, which is a karmelis. Now let's proceed to describe the mano, this lock. Hai mano 
So this mano, which is the point of the spirit to remain the chacham, this mano which is ten tefachim in height, how exactly is it configured? Hey chidomi, it less be arbo if it's less than four tefachim in width, makam peturu, then it's a makam peturu, it's an exempt area, it's not reckoned with. Why wouldn't Rame allow free transfer of that key from the scoop, which is the commas, over to the lockbox, which is merely a makam tur? So that doesn't work. The is the arbo. If you propose that, it's wide. It's large in size. It has a surface of 4 by 4 tvachim. If that's the case, then the words that are abundant are a bit difficult to understand. In this case, the Rabbanon would say that you can go ahead and freely transfer from the threshold, which is a caramelis, over to the lockbox, which is a rishus sayachim. It's 10 tvachim high. It's 4 tvachim wide. Regards, with regards to this case, Rabbanu would say, even when the man was above 10, he can go ahead and freely transfer, maybe Maftech on Shabbos. He can place a key in advance on Erev Shabbos, or Menichabe Skuba, place it on the threshold, which is a Karmelis, Lomachar, tomorrow on Shabbos, Pesach Benoel Boy. He can pick up that key from the Karmelis, put it into a lockbox, which is a large size lockbox, which appears to be a Shasayachet. Umezir with the Skuba, when he's done, he returns the key back to the Carmelis, or the or to the window above the Pesach. How can he do that? Welcome to the Carmelis, who should say Yachin. If this man was 10 ton for him high, 4 for him wide, how can Rabban allow him to do that? To transfer a key from the Carmelis to the Rishis Yachin? So, we have difficulty here. For me, it says you can't transfer. Rabban says you could transfer. What type of man are we speaking about? We know it's 10 for him high. The Bryce clearly said that. But how wide is it? Is it less than four? In which case it's a Malkam Tur? Why can't you transfer according to the mayor? Is it four Tfachim wide, which makes it Eushas HaYachad? How could you transfer according to the Chachamim? Um Rabbi, Lo'ilam, certainly the Lesbe, the Ein Boyas Arbo, it doesn't have four Tfachim, a four Tfach wide surface. So it's ten Tfach high, but it doesn't actually have a width of four. However, V'yish Boy Lochak, Ula Shlim The door, Beside it, has enough material, enough thickness, which would theoretically allow for the expansion. If you should carve out some of that door, you would be able to expand and extend the surface of this model and then give it a surface of 4x4. Four four. So, 4 is a prerequisite for a, a shear of a rishus of a makam chash. The question is in a case where the actual surface is less than 4, but the area next to it can accommodate an expansion. Do we say that we virtually vir- visualize this surface as though it extends into the area beside it and that grants it a prominence, a chashivas of 4x4? Do we say that or not? That's the point of contention. So it doesn't have our ba, v'yeish boy lachuk, and has enough material to be carved out, with lashlim ledal to complete a surface area of 4. Well, please, this is the point of my class. Ramea sava, chaykik in lashlim. We view it as though it's carved out. And that completes, that's mashlim, the required surface area. And therefore, according to Rameh, this model is a Rishi Sayachad. Therefore, you can't transfer. You cannot transfer from the scuba, which is the Karmelis, over to the model, which is deemed a Rishi Sayachad. For Rabban and Sabri, they don't hold of this concept. Either it has a surface requirement or it doesn't. You can't virtually extend and carve. Therefore, they say, this model, which is 10 Tfachamai, but less than four tefachim width, does not have a din of a shesayachot, rather it's a makam tumor. That's why they allow you to place the, the key in advance in the eskubo, which is the karmas, with the intent to come back on Shabbos and transfer that key to the lockbox, which is merely a makam tumor. Continues the Gemara, Amra av baby barabai, Indeed, we can conclude three lessons, three things from this price. Number one, We learned that Ramea holds, you can virtually carve to complete a surface area. This is what we mentioned earlier. It seems pretty evident from our price that Ramea reverted. He changed his mind, he backtracked. From the halacha of Sharigina, meaning, although on the initiation of the price, Ramea seems to say that this cross rishus handling is us even when it pertains to rishus the rabbana like a karmelis. That's why you can't stand in the gina which is a karmelis and handle the the key in the lockbox 
which is Erush Sayachid. Yeah, that was initially his shita, but eventually he changed. He backtracked from it, which is pretty, pretty clear and evident from the Allah of the Chanuyas, where Ramea tells us that you may stand in the and the karmas, the askupa, the threshold, and lean over to the lockbox, which is a rishus hayachet, and handle something there. So apparently, Ramey's restriction only applies to rishus the oiraisa, like rishus hayachet, where it can lead to a person perhaps inadvertently doing a malacha. But when it pertains merely to rishus the rabbanon, there's no restriction, there's no limitation regarding cross-border handling. Usham esmina. And thirdly, we hear from the brisa. Mid the Rabbanan, from the sheet of the Rabbanan. And this is a reference to the halacha with the Rabbanan tell us when the lockbox is ten high, but not four tefach wide, in which case it's a Mokam tour. You can go ahead. Position yourself on the askupa. Take your key from the Carmelis, insert it into the lockbox, which is merely a Mokam tour, because it doesn't have a, a proper width of four tefach. But then when you are done, where do you place that key? The Rabbanan gave us very specific instructions. You can place it up on a window, which doesn't have a proper surface area of Fort Fakhim, which is a Makam Tor. But you cannot place that key on a window which is properly sized for by Fort Fakhim, which makes it a Yishasayachet. Now, although, although the key was deposited into the Mano, which is a Makam Tor, so yeah, it originated in the Karmas, but then it made a stop in the middle of its journey in a Makam Tor, that terminates the act, that terminates the mice. You still can't go ahead and take the key from the Makam Tur and bring it into Rosh Why? What's wrong with doing that? Why can't you take something from a Makam Tur and put it in Rosh Sayachat? Says the Gemara, Rishamis Minam and Rabbana. From this halach of the Rabbana, we learn the following halach. Isalib the Rabdimi, indeed we hold. We concur with Rabdimi's halacha, who told us that this situation will be us. The Chiyasa Rabdimi, when Rav Dimi came, Amar Rav Yechon, he quoted Rav Yechon. Mokim she'ein ba abo labo. If you have a place, a post, situated between the Shuzayach and the Shuzayach, and the surface, the top surface is less than four, which makes it a Mokim Tur. Mutar levnei the Shuzayach, or levnei the Shuzayach, makadu, hayach of the Katafalov. That allows both members, Shuzayach people, and Shuzayach people, to shift their loads on it. Because there's no Issa, it's a Mokim Tur. You can go ahead and take something from Rosh Hashanah and place it in a Makam Tur. Or from Rosh Hashanah and place it in a Makam Tur. There's no concern. So they can go ahead and be Makatev Olaf. Provided they don't switch things. They don't use the Makam Tur as a transfer point. Through which they're going to transfer from Rosh Hashanah on one side over to Rosh Hashanah on the other side. This is the Rabbanan. It shouldn't appear like you're transferring from Rosh to the other. And indeed, this halacha is corroborated from Al Bryce with the Rabbanan. Tell us, look, you can take the key from the Karmus, the Eskupa, and insert it into the Mano, which is the Makam Tur. That's okay. But you may not take that key from the Makam Tur and place it now in Rosh Hashanah. Because in effect, you've used the Makam Tur as a transfer point to take something from a Karmus over to the Rosh Hashanah, and that can't be done. Therefore, the only thing you could do is place it in a small size window, which is less than Fort Fakh, in which case in itself is a Makam Tur. And therefore, there are no concerns. So in summary, we learned that, according to our mayor, when it pertains to Rishis de Rice, you cannot go ahead and lean over into the other shus and handle something for concern that you might go ahead and inadvertently bring it over to you and do a malach. So the one concluded indeed that this only applies to Rishis Ayachad, Rishis Ayrabim, but not to Karmas. And even with regard to that, Allah the Rabban disagreed and they brought a raya from the marketplace in Yerushalayim, which was a uh, was a, a Rishasurabim, and we see that they were allowed to go ahead and stand in the Rishasurabim, stand in the street, and lean over to the door of the storefront and handle the keys, even though the mano was a Rishasayachet. And the Gemara concluded with three things. Number one, that Rameir apparently backtracked from his halacha of Carmelis. Number two, that, um, actually that was number two. Number one was the concept of chayking lahashlam. The country may you can virtually carve out an area to extend the area beside it to give it a, a chashivas, a din of a makam. The Rabban disagree with that. Number two was the fact that it may reverted from the Isra of Karmelis. And number three, 
that all the way Makkab Torah is bottled, but it cannot be used at a transfer point to take something from one Rishos to the other. Continues the Mishnah. Neger, Neger is a bolt which would be inserted into the threshold to keep the door closed, to keep the door locked. So this Neger, Sheyesh Barosha Glustera, which has a thick head, Rashi explains it can be used theoretically, it can function as a cleat to crush spices. So this, uh, this neger is really problematic because it can give the appearance, when he puts it into the threshold, give the appearance like he's adding to binyan, he's constructing something. So this neger, because it has the added feature of the glustra, which gives it the appearance of a cleat, perhaps mitigates that concern. It doesn't look like construction material. It looks like it's a clean meant to be used for various functions and putting it into the threshold doesn't give the appearance of, of binion. It's not, it doesn't look like he's adding to the structure because it's a clean. So can or can he not use this neger on Shabbos? Neger, sheesh, bereshe, glustra. So the neger that has the thick head which gives the appearance of a utensil. Rabbi has oyser. He says you can't use it on Shabbos because it still can give the appearance like He's using it for construction. He's putting it at the threshold. He's doing binyan. Rabbi Yossi Matu, he says you can. Because in this case, that it has a thick head, it's pretty clear that it's a utensil, it's a kli, and does not give the appearance of construction material whatsoever. So you can go ahead and insert it into the threshold. Amr Blazer, I'll prove to you, my Allah, that you cannot use this nigger. There was an incident regarding the shul in Tveri. In fact, they were accustomed to using this type of Bolt, until Ramgamliel and the Skenim came along and told them they can't use it. So this proves that it's us. Rabbi Yosi, I just the opposite. In fact, they withheld from using this thing. That was the original minuk until things changed. Until the Ramgamliel and the elders came along and told them they can use it. So this supports my shita that indeed you can use this type of bolt. Continues the Gemara. What exactly are we speaking about? Is this bolt tied to the doorway? Is it just loosely lying on the ground? Says the Gemara was speaking that it's actually tied and suspended from the doorway. What if it's tied with a strong rope which can handle the weight of this bolt? It's nital ba'egdoi. It can be handled with the, with the rope. Kuli amale pligi. All agree that you can use this negar that has this thick head, because since it's also attached, properly attached to the doorway, it appears like, like it's meant to be used for that purpose. It's, it's a utensil. It's a bolt meant to go in and out of that threshold. It's designated for that purpose and does not give the indication at all the appearance of binyan. So that's agreed upon by you all. You can use this type of bolt. Machlegas only applies to a case where the bolt cannot be handled by its by its rope. The rope is too thin and flimsy and cannot sustain the weight of this, of this bolt. Although the bolt is actually tied to the doorway and it has the gluster on it, but since it can't be handled by the rope, it's problematic. Perhaps it can't be considered like it's tied to the doorway because it's not really tied with the rope that can't sustain its weight. So that's the context of our machlekes. V'she'en nitl be'igdoi Machlekes is when it cannot be handled with its rope. The Mar Savar, Rabbi Yassi says, even so, Kivan the Yeshbarish Glustra, since it has the Glustra thick head, Turis Kliolov, it is regarded like a Kli, and using it doesn't imply binion whatsoever. There's no concern. Umar Savar, however, Reza holds, Kivan the Ena Nital, Beigdoi, Loi, since it can't be handled by its rope, so it's considered like it's just sitting around on the floor and not really connected to the doorway, doesn't relate to the doorway, and gives the appearance of perhaps construction material being added to the threshold, in which case it's Asr on Shabbos. Okay, time for a brief Chazar of today's daf. We began with the Mishnah. Regarding these improperly constructed doors, the Mishnah tells us you can only use it if it's tied, suspended from the doorway, tied and hanging, and also suspended a bit off the ground. According to Abai, if it has a hinge, or according to Rabbi, if it previously had a hinge, which indicates that it's, it's functioning as a door, that replaces the um, substitutes for the requirement of suspension all needs to be is tied and hanging from the doorway even if it's sitting on the ground dragging it's okay we proceed with the Mishnah where Rav Meir tells us one may not stand in 
lean over and handle something with Shisram or vice versa, for concern that he might inadvertently bring the Chayfetz over. Chacham disagree, they say there's no such concern. I'm concluded with the Mishnah discussing this threshold bolt. So if it's properly tied to the doorway, in which case it appears like part of the doorway apparatus, we'll agree it can be used. But if it's not properly affixed, for instance, the rope holding it can't sustain its weight. But this negger, this bolt, has a glustra, a thick head, in which case it appears like a cleat. That explains why it can be used, according to Rabbi Yaisi, because it doesn't look like construction material. Whereas Rabbi Lezer says, since it's not properly affixed to the doorway, and it doesn't appear like part of the doorway apparatus, it can't be used, even in this case, because it gives the appearance, like he's adding it in there and he's constructing, he's doing binyan, which is Asr on Shabbos.